The gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Norman, is, rec is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I've been sitting here three hours, and we basically, and I want to thank the witnesses for, for coming, but really, the people that should be here are not here. The witnesses for the last three hours I've heard cannot really answer any questions or explain anything about what happened because it wasn't in their chain of command. Uh, the ones that should be here are the Capitol Police. Where are they? They're not here. Where is the acting chief, former Chief Sunland? The chair has subpoena powers. Why isn't he here? Now, understand the, the, the chief now is Pittman. We're going to have her at another meeting. Uh, but she's not here now. And I guess what's shocking, uh, we've had yet to have one hearing of all the crises that are going on in this, in this country. Economic crisis, crisis. Inflation is going through the roof. Uh, we've got a border crisis. Millions of people coming across unfettered, putting our police in danger. Uh, coming across the border, we don't know who they are. Not one hearing. Not one hearing on the energy crisis. You ask that citizen about filling up with their car or truck with gas, what are they paying? 50% more. Where is the, the hearing on that? Our national security crisis. Where is our, our hearings on what China's doing with their lab that's ongoing and with the investigation that's not happening on how the virus got here? Uh, where is our budget crisis? This administration is spending this country into a debt that's going to be hard to recover from. Where is our, our, where is our meeting and our hearing on that? Where is our criminal crisis? As has been said, we've had cities all over this country destroyed to the tune of $2 billion over the past 60 days. Where's our, our, our uh, meeting on that? Where's our hearing? Yet, here we sit uh, for going on three hours over something that happened 160 days ago. We have yet to have one witness that really knows much of what's going on. And uh, it's a shame for the American people. Uh, the taxpayers deserve better. And we see, the taxpayers see what's going on. This is a shell game. This is, this is a dog and pony show to, keep, uh, to try to keep the emphasis off the real things that are affecting real Americans all over this country. Uh, the taxpayers get it. The, 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 the emphasis now is on anything but handling the crisis. And we have an administration that has not had a meaningful, um, meaningful hearing where the press asks any question other than where the has a dog bitten anybody or is the cat lost? Uh, and so, Madam Chair, this is an insult. This is a, uh, something that I think the people are seeing through, and this is something that shouldn't happen. It's a waste of taxpayers' money, and it's, uh, it's a diversion that is not going to work. It's ridiculous. I yield the remaining part of my time back. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen. Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20-hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it, according to investigators? They insist he was intentionally targeting white, military-looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black-on-white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals, no matter what color they are? When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th, and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong. 
But that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. Yeah. You know, you look at January 6th. Everybody has said it was a tragic day. It never should have yep. happened. They wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But, you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson. He looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes, and he was like something like 40 percent of the people were just let in by Capitol Police. But they don't talk about any of that. And you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house, trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did, they, last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, th that, there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, th where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. <laughs> and I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings and cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that that January 6th is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. I don't agree with it. And I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th. And they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people. Right, and so a lot of this uh, the southern, the, relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out, and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they they have proven themselves to be, uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So, um, is white supremacy? Is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most uh, biggest threat to to America? I think that's overblown, and I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, 
in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day-to-day -day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has, has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure it does in certain areas. But is the, is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.